Peace Sabbath Church, and welcome to our, our divine service today. It's, it's great to, to have you all on. I've just got a few announcements for us all today. Um, the first announcement is that Chiswick Teens Ministries are presenting a mental health awareness uh, day on Friday. That's Friday the 21st of May uh, from 7 to 8. It's called The Real Glow Up. The Real Glow Up. Um, Josie Masanu, I'm sure she's got you know great plans for this day, so please come along and support. It's going to be a good day. It's from Friday, 21st of May, 7 to 8 p.m. Um, and that's, this is led by the Chiswick Teens Ministries. The next announcement is that I'm sure a lot of you guys are aware of what's happening in uh, India at the moment. I believe uh, we're having unprecedented numbers of people who are dying due to uh, COVID. Um, I believe 200,000 people have died so far and 400,000 people have been affected or infected, sorry. Um, and ADRA are actually starting this initiative called the uh, India COVID Emergency Relief. They're asking that we support with our donations. Um, their, their national health service is under immense amounts of stress and strain, um, and they really need our support. However much money that we donate, it's going to be tripled, I've been told. So if you need any more information, please contact myself or just please go on the ADRA website and give your donations. They definitely need our help. Um, my next announcement is that this evening we are having a, a very interesting um, AYS program. It's going to be a really interesting one. It's called Interacting with the Police, and it starts at 4.30, Interacting with the Police. I believe uh, Rebecca, um, Chris, Craig, they're going to be playing a focal part in this, um, in this service, um, you know, as because of the occupation, et cetera, and it's going to be a good one. So please come and support. I know we're having an outreach day today, um, but I just ask that you plan ahead so that you can get back in time to come and support this program. Um, and finally, got some great news. Sister Nash is actually a grandma for the first time. A grandma, um, her grandson, sorry, her son um, had a, a uh, young boy called Nathan Joshua Nash. And he was born on Thursday and um, he was he weighed in, I think about seven pounds. So a healthy, healthy baby. So um, please let's just uh, pray for the, you know, the mom and the baby that they uh, continue to do well. Um, and yes, Sister, Sister Nash, congratulations again. Sorry, Auntie Mari, that's uh, Sister Nash. That's Sister Nash. Those are my announcements for today. Um, Auntie Iris, over to you if you're there. Sister Nash. Can you hear me? We can hear you, Sister Nash. Okay. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to a Divine Hour. Today is uh, prison ministry, 10 minutes spot. And I pray that there'll be a great support on next week, the 22nd of, of May, when prison ministry day will be, will be having. Uh, we also like to thank the department department to like to thank the church that they will attend in force and to support this day because it's very special. We will have Brother Elder Burns who will be taking the Sabbath school and uh, we will have Pastor who is, will be our main speaker and then we'll have Trevor in, in the afternoon at AYS will be taking the AYS program. The thought for prison ministry today is Matthew 25, 36, and it says, when I was in prison, they visited me. But eight years ago, the church came together and we form a group of people for prison ministry program. And today, 
we had a group of 11. Today we have just four in the group. And we are definitely asking that if you are very much interested in his ministry, you will see Donna, myself, Pauline, or Leo. Prison ministry for us, for each and every one of us, is that we should bring others into prison to support the inmates and to lead them to Christ. And at the end of it, both family and inmates will know about the knowledge of God, the goodness of God, and they will have the thoughts of prayer in their lives. At the moment, we are having four people who is actually studying and training for prison ministry because the group that we have had of 11 people had dwindled. And so anyone who is interested in prison ministry, please see myself, Pauline, Leo, Donna, and we will assign you into training We need the consistency of training and the independence of the group support to assist the pastors, prison ministry, team workers, and group coordinators to gain access to the prison. Our mission is to bring Christ, his love, to the inmates by being alongside them and supporting them. God has given us all the opportunity, not only for our churches or in the community, but each and every one of us should have the experience of bringing the word of God to the inmates so that they would realize, as they have often said, that they are people of God, not because they have done wrong, but they are people of God. It's a good ministry that we should get ourselves involved in, because it would be said to us, when I was in prison, did you visit me? Thank you. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church. Hope we're all doing well. It is my honour and pleasure to actually do the welcome this morning. As I look outside, I'm, I'm looking and it's like the weather doesn't seem to be too great. But I'm so thankful that today is Sabbath. It's the day that we can just come together. We can praise. We can worship in the comfort of our homes. Uh, you know, I'm going to thank each one of you first and foremost for even picking up the phone some of us have dialed in others have decided to press that link you know from from our emails to to join others are watching on youtube so i want to thank each one of you for actually coming through today simply because we could have been elsewhere some of us have had long have had a long week and you know we could have been sleeping we could have been watching another you know you know another program but we decided to be here so i want to thank let me see how many of us are online so all 42 individuals that are online that's on the actual zoom talk as well as those who are actually watching the stream on youtube welcome one and welcome all i'm just going to say a prayer kind of love and father thank you for life thank you for you know being able to communicate to us each other lord thank you for friendships thank you lord for family 
we have all our we go through our trials and tribulations each one of us on a daily basis and, and life is hard sometimes Lord. but thank you for just being a friend thank you for being a father thank you for being that great physician lord i pray that we can have a fantastic program and outreach program today i pray that you know if those aren't able to go outside we're able to actually do outreach from from our homes and actually call the phone and call friends and call individuals we haven't spoken to for quite some time i pray that you can just be of this program i, I pray that it can be a blessing as well this is my prayer in the name of jesus christ i pray amen 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 You are mute, Anjaris. Apologies for that. Good morning again. It's lovely to see you all. I haven't seen you for such a long time. Um, I've been asked to speak just for a few minutes, really, about certain things and kindness and acts and things that we do. Now, as you know, the community ministries is working. Well, some of you may not know, but we are working and doing a lot and very, very busy each week. Um, there are a couple of things um, that I'd like to share with you. Um, obviously we have the grab and go service on every Sunday that Marcia is just working so hard, you know, to keep it going and to operate everything that needs to be operated with a small team. Um, we need help. Um, this is going to sound a little bit, um, like we're, we're, we're not really begging, we're just asking. Um, there's so many things that are done on a Sunday. So many people are fed. We give meals to the homeless. They come to the door, they grab and go. It's literally called a grab and go service because that's what they do. Um, Marcia would like some helpers. She needs some more kitchen staff to assist. We have chefs that are, some of them are from our church, some of them are from the community. You know, they, so there's a chef on a rotor to cook the meals. We need kitchen assistants and, you know, the odd person who'd like to talk to some of the people when they come in outside, if you don't mind doing that. Um, and also she needs drivers because we do deliveries on Sundays as well. So we take food to the homeless um, and to other people who may not be homeless, but need a hot meal within their home. So, you know, in that confinement. So we actually do that and it requires a lot of effort. It's quite challenging when you try to do it without as much support as you could have. So Marty is appealing for that. So if anybody would like to volunteer to be kind and assist in that way, that would be fantastic. She would really, really appreciate it. The other thing is the food bank, which runs on Sabbaths. Um, that is another busy service that we are running. We did appeal for some support. Um, Unfortunately, I, I suppose everybody's been busy and we didn't get much, um, sadly. We had one person donate Bibles. We asked for Bibles. We've had one person donate some and those Bibles went immediately. People took them. The, um, the same member of our church volunteered some more, some more, another box of Bibles. She sent, she sent in 10 brand new Bibles, you know, and they've gone as well and some smaller ones. Um, the, just the New Testament volume, those have gone. One of the volunteers yesterday wanted a Bible and I didn't have one to give her, um, which was really unfortunate. I couldn't find one. So it's something that we need. If anybody would like to donate Bibles, that would be amazing. People want them. You know, we have many sitting at home that we don't use, but we could also purchase some. That would be really nice to give someone a brand new Bible as a gift. Um, also, we need gifts of donations of things like sanitary products, you know, deodorant, tissues, kitchen paper, washing up liquid, which is really reasonable. You know, you can get some of those for 37 pence at the supermarket. So we need those things. People are constantly asking for them. Those would be really good. If you'd like to maybe speak to, um, Esther, you know, the finance side about donating, maybe pledging some money towards us because we we are currently surviving on the stuff that we get from the supermarkets and the Felix charity, which is absolutely amazing. Our other supply are the people who live around the church. You know, we have a lady called Anushka that I'd like us to pray for. She's been so marvelous. Every two weeks, she drops off um, a bag with some sanitary towels. She drops rice and 
um, shower gels. She's been so kind, you know, she's been wonderful. Um, and there are a few others locally who do that. They also want to donate money to help us. And I'd love it if our family could help as well. So if anybody would like to maybe pledge five pound a month or something, you know, that would help. Or if you'd like to maybe buy 10 bottles of washing up liquid or um, a box of soap powder, because we divide them up into smaller bags so that families can have some. Um, deodorants, you might want to donate 10 of those. Whatever you'd like to donate, we would appreciate. Really, the, the food bank is, is now running brilliantly. The community is so supportive. We have many community volunteers. Today, for example, you know, we need around 12 to 13 people every time we operate, simply because we have a street team, because we take food out on the street and people know we're coming and they look forward to having our meals. So we take them a bag with a hot meal, a snack, some fruit from, you know, what we have and a drink and some chocolate or whatever we, we get in that week, we take out to them and they look forward to it. Not only do they look forward to it, they look forward to the conversations. If we are late, they say, oh, you're late today because they know that we are coming. So that's our street team and it's working really, really well at the minute. Um, we cover Chiswick, Hammersmith and Shepherd's Bush. Wherever we see someone sleeping rough or just on the side of the streets, we will you know, offer them a meal. Um, that's going really wonderfully well. We do not need any more volunteers at the moment from church because the community volunteers are doing a wonderful job and that's marvellous. So your support in prayers would be fantastic. Also to pray for our volunteers. There are several of them who have requested prayer. Last week, we had an outdoor praise session that went, that went really, really well. Pastor came and he supported us, which was marvelous. Um, we had a few members come as well, which was just, it was just great to see. The public were out there. We were singing for two hours. God held the rain off. We prayed for that in the morning and he just delivered again. And that went really, really well. One lady, she said, this is the best concert she's ever been to. And I thought, we thought, well, we, it wasn't, we didn't even think of it as a concert. We were just praising the Lord and she just enjoyed it. We had another lady join in. They selected songs that they wanted us to sing, things that they knew. And it was marvelous. It was really good. So your prayers really for the food bank. The neighbors are being wonderfully kind. And, you know, we may think, oh, some people aren't particularly in need. We don't know. I mean, the people who come request food. There are people who come along from all walks of life. There's one lady, she just has been so wonderful. She thinks we are amazing. She says her priest at the Catholic church in the White City, who I gave a poster to, um, you know, sent her. And she said the first time she came, she just brought a little bag. She said she couldn't believe it. We had to give her three more bags. She, can't, she went home with four bags that day to feed her family because we had a lot of food and whatever we have, we want to share. So. She comes and she says every week how marvelous it is. Um, some weeks she can't manage, we take her home. You know, Alfred's been really good, he's dropped her home. Barbara's taken her home and she only lives up the road. And she just appreciates it so much. She says, you are good people. You know, we had some olive oil the other week and I'm, this is just to share with you how much people are in need. One lady burst into tears. She said, this bottle of olive oil is like Christmas for her. She said, I needed it and I couldn't afford it. So it's just marvelous. Anything that you would like to give would be really, really, really happily and gratefully received. So I just wanted to share that with you and solicit your prayers for our future um, projects and for the current projects that we are working on. We have a community that for the first time is really recognizing us. They're in and out of our building at the moment and offering services. It's amazing. And I think that is a testament to who we are and to God's working. I think everything happens in his time and we are so grateful. So continue to pray for us and please, please pledge something if you can. You don't need to come. We just need you to offer assistance. That would be amazing. Thank you very much. Yeah. Morning, everyone. Okay, sorry. 
I can't see you and I'm trying to see as much of you as possible. Okay, I couldn't see you. Good morning, everyone. Okay, give me a wave. Some of you are lying down, some of you are sitting down, some of you are, okay. Morning, Mark. Um, how are you? Mo morning, who else can I see? Um, Viv, you're looking very serious there. Good morning. Um, David, have you got your grandchildren with you? That's very nice, hi. Yes, uh, nice to see you, nice to see you, nice to see you all. Um, let's just pray and then we'll just... Uh, visitors today. Did somebody say something? No. Okay. I visitors today to church. Oh, her. <laughs> you, you are mute until it's here. I'm muted. All right. Okay. Let me start again then. Sorry, I didn't realize that was unmuted. Let's just bow our heads for prayer. Heavenly Father, we are just so very thankful for your love. We're just so very thankful for your mercy, for your grace, for how you just keep on keeping on with us, Lord. Um, and as we come now, just to spend a few minutes um, just looking at your word in regard to kindness, we just pray that you'll be with us in a very special way. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Okay, so today is um, Random Acts of Kindness Sabbath. Now, last Sunday, I was actually the recipient of a lovely act of kindness, right? Um, I had rushed, <laughs> I had rushed out, out, of, um, out of my home um, because I think it was, we had just finished prayer breakfast um, and I had to zoom up, but I had to come out very quietly um, because for the whole week, I've actually been on Zoom really late, a lot of meetings really, really late. Um, Sabbath, again, I was on Zoom or whatever. So my husband wasn't feeling great about that, yeah? Um, so he's, very, he's very good most times, but this week, that week, he hadn't been very great. So I, I didn't have time to make, you know, make breakfast or anything. I actually zo Zoomed out. Um, and last Saturday, last Sunday, we were actually tidying up church and clearing up um, some of the things in regard to the children's department. So I was upstairs clearing up things and whatever. My stomach was going. You, usually I, I try to eat, but I, I, I was really quite, I was feeling quite hungry. And who should walk up, up the stairs um, into the children's department and just say, oh, morning, I've, um, I've bought something for you. My thing was, how did they know? How did they know that I was going to be quite pecky? So they'd bought me a really, but it was the wonderful gifts of Bernie, actually. Bernie came up and, and gave that to me. She, she'd give me a, a bit, she had peeled a lovely bit. I've never seen such a big orange, a big orange. Um, and she had also cut a big slice of a banana cake that she had made. Um, I don't think I've ever tasted such a sweet, so, such a very sweet um, orange. Um, and I was just thinking, God kind of sends people along our way in regard to random acts of kindness when we need it most. So Bernie, thank you very much for that. That was really um, nice. And I just want us, as we begin to just look at this whole issue about um, kindness, if we turn to Luke 6, 35, um, that it's a, it's a famous verse that most of us know. Um, we we um, read it often. I'm gonna read it first of all. Um, in the New International Version, and then I'm going to read it in the Message Version. Um, so it says, but love your enemies, do good to them, and lend them without expecting to get anything back. Then your reward will be great, and you will be sons of the Most High, because he's kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Be merciful, just as your Father is merciful. Then if we move to the Message, I tell you, Love your enemies, help and give without expecting um, a return. You'll never, I promise, regret it. Live at this God-created identity, the way our Father lives towards us, generously and graciously. Even when we're at our worst, our Father is kind. You be kind. Okay, I forgot to also say um, in regard to, I'm going back, in regard to um, this random acts of kindness, the person who so lovingly, I've received another something this morning um, in regard to acts of kindness. The young lady who was so gracious, 
so gracious in sending me <laughs> that book, which I did, I think I really needed that type of devotional book. I, I thank you for your act of kindness this morning. Okay, back to our text in Luke 6, 635. Um, it talks about, but love your enemies. You know, th those are people who don't like you, yeah? Um, those are people who you don't get on with. Those are people who irritate you maybe. It might not be your enemies, but they irritate you. They annoy you, you keep away from, and you know who they are, yeah? You know that um, sometimes you're in church, that was a long time ago, talking about in church, maybe you see them and you go, th go the other way. For whatever reason, they've upset you and you haven't kind of dealt with anything yet. Um, it's those people, he says, do good to them and lend to them without expecting to get anything back. So do good, hoping for nothing in return. But the question is, the thing is with us, sadly, is that we do want something in return. Um, I was, the, the other day I, um, I was dealing with a young man um, at school and his behavior isn't great at all. Um, and we're trying to work with him in a way so that he can learn um, how to manage his behavior. You know, he might, the, the things he says is sometimes quite disrespectful. And you, you know, sometimes um, you get a sense of children um, when in terms of how, in terms of respect in regard to how they talk to their parents. Um, and the, sometimes they come into school and teachers, you know, expect respect. I think the, the thinking is, is that if you cannot see that child demonstrating respect to their parents, who is the first people that we ever have, who's the first authoritarian people that come into our lives. If, one, if a child is unable to do that, then it's very unlikely that when they move into school that we would get that. Yeah, so there was issues, there was issues there because in terms of the respect for mom and dad, that, that, that wasn't there. Um, but we was actually trying and we tried to do something quite different with this child um, because that he wasn't kind of co connecting with things um, and he just seemed so out of sort. Um, we decided that we would give him a taste of something different to actually show that despite how he was behaving and despite how, you know, um, he had detention and was excluded for a day and whatever, um, that we would demonstrate God's love in some way to show him that we value him, even though his behavior didn't stop us from being good to him. So um, I was asked to take him on a Sunday morning to the radio station. <laughs> um, because he was very, he's very, very, he's very interesting because he's very, very gifted. He can, he sings amazing, he plays all the instruments, any instrument you can think about, he plays, he's very bright. Um, but for whatever reason, there's something in regard to um, his behavior. So we decided, well, maybe, you know, taking him to somewhere like that, that might actually help him. Um, so, you know, Sunday morning, I had to get up, go and meet his mom, take him all the way down to Watford. Um, to um, and he did a he did a stinch on the on the radio station. Now, coming back to school, our expectation our expectation is that because we have you know gone out of way out of our way for this child, um, taken him down, <laughs> taken him down. I think afterwards the presenters even took him out to to have something to eat. I think after that as as well. Um, that somehow when he came back to school. You know, the behavior might be slightly different because, you know, he he um, he understands that, but it, but it hadn't changed. And I realized that something in doing this this week, I realized that um, when this child behaves negative, I actually ignore him. I actually move away from him. I'm, I actually um, try as much as possible to avoid him. Um, and I realized that that way of dealing with that's not that's not God way because God deals with us. Um, when we are not great at our worst, as, as that text talk, talked about, he's still there being kind to us, being loving to us. And I was wondering, why is it that I feel so kind of irritated about, about this? Why did I feel so irritated about, about this? Child? And, you know, the bottom line is when, when you move it all away is that I actually have an issue in, re in regard to rejection. I don't I'm not good at that. I'm not good at um, 
be, you know, that, that whole issue about rejection. I actually run away from that or I'm quite thinking about that. Um, and so God, God taught me something in regard to that. And at the end of this week, um, I had to meet, we had to give an update in regard to his behavior, which hasn't been good at all. And God reminded me about this text in Luke 6.35 about loving and, and, and doing things for people and not expecting anything back. For that meeting, um, you know, the Holy Spirit was speaking to my mind, I was saying, your focus for this meeting should be not about, um, you know, that I think he broke something, that I think he called somebody a name, that he was whatever, but it was just to focus on the good that he had done that week. So my rapport with the parent was about trying as much as possible to focus on, on the good thing. And it was very interesting how I think he was really amazed. He just kept on saying, you know, thank you, miss, thank you, you know, thank you, miss, thank you. But I, we will talk with him again on Monday, but it was very interesting that I just thought that the, the usual report is that, you know, he's done this, he's done that. In terms of just doing this and looking at um, Luke 6.35, it just reminded me that, yes, you know, God d clearly demonstrated that, you know, he wanted to, wanted us to do the good, not expecting that we would get a good return. And it was whilst we was yet sinners that Christ died for us, while we were messing up, while we was doing all those other type of things. Um, and how many times, you know, th this thing about, how many times have you heard you or yourself said things like, you know, this is the third time I've phoned this person. Um, they never phone, they never phone me. If they're, you know, if they're not gonna phone me, I'm, I'm not gonna bother about that. Yeah, was, how many times have we said that? Why am I the person always phoning? Why can't they phone? Wanting something back. Um, or another one we might hear or say is that, you know, I went out of my way, yeah, to get this gift for this person. I never heard not even a word of thanks, never again. We, the, the, what God reminds us is that um, the word of God says, do good, hoping for nothing in return. It does not say do good, and expect a thank you or do good and others will think well of you. It'd be nice if they did, uh, but if they don't, that shouldn't stop you from doing. And sometimes it stops us from doing on our motive for doing um, then becomes a concern. Um, but it does say do good, then God, then your reward will be great and you will be sons of the most high. What wonderful promise, you know, that God says do good and the reward. You, it's, it's not about this reward, about the thank you, because you might never hear that um, because you're not doing it to hear the, the thank you. Um, you're doing it um, in terms of, you know, you allowing God to use you to be a blessing. So, so God might be saying, you know, that's okay if you don't get a thank you. Um, I've told you your reward will be great. Not only that, but you will, you know, you will be my sons and daughter. You know, you are my sons and daughters. And therefore, um, in showing kindness, you are um, imitating me, your heavenly father. You know, we resemble our father somewhere. People, people see me and they say things like, I know you're Stuckham's father, Stuckham's daughter. I know you're David's daughter. Um, and it's because I resemble him in some way. As children of God, we are to re resemble him in terms of the kindness. Um, in showing kindness, we're imitating our heavenly father who shows his love towards his enemies. In showing kindness, um, there are benefits both for our spiritual um, and health um, needs, you know, both for our physical health, our mental health and our spiritual health. So did you know, did you know that people who volunteer tend to experience fewer aches and pains did you, I, I didn't know that. It, um, the, a research shows giving help to others um, protect overall health. And, and there's twice as much as aspirins. Um, they're better to protect against heart disease. Yeah, so giving help to others protect overall health and they're twice as much as um, better in terms of protecting you against um, disease compared to aspirins. And people over 55 are over uh, people over 55 and over who volunteer, say like for two or more organizations, have an impressive 44% lower um, likelihood of dying early. Now that I didn't know. The other one I didn't know. Now, did you know that kindness decreases stress? Yeah. Perpetual kind, kind people have 20% um, less cortisol, the stress hormone, and it's slower than the average population. Didn't know that. 
And did you know that committing acts of kindness lowers blood pressure? Um, acts of kindness creates emotional warmth, which releases a hormone, a hormone known as oxytocin. Oxytocin causes the release um, of a chemical called nitric oxide, um, which dilates the blood, dilates the blood vessels. And this um, readdresses, re releases and or reduces blood pressure. And therefore oxytocin is known as a card cardio, cardio protective hormone. It protects the heart by lowering blood pressure. So, you know, kindness, this act of kindness is only not only in terms of helping us um, grow um, spiritually, but also physically, um, you know, it's also important for our health. Um, in, in Luke um, 6.35 um, that we read, um, it's like, I oftentimes think it's like God saying, you know, you cannot operate the same way as others um, because you're now a child of, of the King. It is through the Holy Spirit living in you that you'll ever be able to show kindness to your enemies because showing kindness to your enemies is a gift from me. And so because he is kind um, to the ungrateful and the wicked, remember, he doesn't say he's kind to the good people who are kind to him or is kind to the ungrateful and wicked. Um, and we, you know, we need to notice that um, because when, when was the last time you were kind to the ungrateful and the wicked? When, when was the last time you were kind to the, somebody like that? God's attitude to ungrateful and wicked people is to show kindness, not to move away from them, not to push them away or move away from them. Um, and I love the way the message um, says it, that even at our worst, our father is kind, so you be kind. I want you to, I want to um, ask you now, if you can, can you just look at your hands for me? I want you all to look at your hands for me. Um, you need it in front, yeah, you need it in front of you to look at. May I ask you to look at your hand just for a moment. Now look at the back of it, then the palm. Now reacquaint, reacquaint yourself with your fingers. <laughs> run, run a thumb around your knuckles for me. Now. What if someone were to film a documentary on your hands? What if a producer were to tell your story based on the life of your hands? What would we see? As with all of us, the film would begin with an infant's fist, maybe, then a close up of a tiny wrapped, a hand wrapped around mommy's finger. Then what? Holding onto a chair as you learn to walk? Having a spoon as you learn to eat. We aren't too long into the feature, maybe film, before we see your hand being affectionate, maybe stroking daddy's face or petting a puppy. Nor is it too long before we see your hand aggressively pushing maybe your big brother, your big sister, or yanking a toy from somebody. All of us learned early um, that the hand is suited for more than survival. It's a tool of emotional expression. The same hand can help, help or hurt, extend or clinch, lift someone up or shove someone down. Now, were you to show the documentary to your friends, you'd be proud of certain moments. Your hand extended with a gift, placing a ring on another's finger, doctoring a wound or preparing a meal or folding evening prayer. And there are other scenes. Shots of accusing fingers, abusive fist, hands taking more than giving, demanding more than offering, wounding more than loving. Oh, the, you know, the power of our hands. Leave them unmanaged and they become weapons, clawing for power, struggling for, for survival, seducing for pleasure. But manage them, these hands, manage them, and our hands become instruments of grace, not just tools in the hands of God, but God's very hands. Surrender them and these hands become the hands of heaven. That's what Jesus did. Our savior completely surrenders his hands to God. The documentary of his hands has no scene of greedy grabbing or unfounded fingers pointing. It does, it does however, have one scene after another of people longing for his compassionate touch. Parents carrying their children, 
the poor bring in their fears, the sinful shoulder in their sorrow, and each one was touched, and each one who was touched was changed. The power of our hands. And we do things with our hands, don't we? One of the things that we do is kind of write. We might write letters or type or whatever. Um, and there's something in terms of when we use words, in terms of using our hands to write something, there's something that, that's something that everyone can do. And in terms of our mouth, in terms of using it to encourage, um, to say an encouraging word. And I think many a man or woman who quit would have kept going if they had received a word of encouragement from someone or a letter of encouragement from someone. Encouragement is so vital that the scripture ranks it up there. You know, when we talk about the gifts like teaching um, and leadership, um, it's there as well, encouragement. Sometimes we see it as a shallow kind of thing, but it's, but it's there. Um, you know, I, in two, in, was it 2000? 2000, 2000 um, I left, remember I left England and went um, to work in Grenada. And um, it, was, it was lovely, it was very nice, but there were times when I really missed home. Um, there were times when I particularly missed church um, because at that time I remember I was teaching the teens um, in the little garage um, and um, I got very, very close um, to them um, and I miss them a lot, particularly um, on, on Sabbath mornings. And church in Grenada is very, <laughs> was very different um, from, you know, Chis from Chiswick. Um, and I remember um, receiving, and most likely I think Jill took over my class um, and I don't even think Jill maybe remember, I don't know if she remembers, but I remember receiving a package um, when I went to the post office, when I went to collect the letters from the post office. And I had a letter, uh, no, I had a package um, from a, a big letter and in it, it had about five letters. And what it was, it was, I think it was Jill, I think she was the teacher then, um, got the children to write a letter um, to me. Um, the children was, each one, I had, so it was about five different letters, um, Lucy, Donette, Corinne, Tyler, Shadeen, you know, those, um, those children and them who, who was, and some, some others as well were in that class. But I you, do you know that I used to open that letter in, in Grenada, six o'clock and it's just darkness, yeah? You, you can't do anything, you can't go anywhere, bus is not, not running, it's just, all right. So, um, so it's, just, it's, just, it's just something, and those letters, they were just, it was just so encouraging. Just so I used to take them and just, you know, read them as, as I was there. And do you, so this letter, I have one of them. And do you know, it's dated the 16th of June, 2000. How much years ago is that? Is that 20 years? I still have, that's one of my, there's about five of them, but I still have the letter. The letter. And most likely, I think, I don't know when maybe Jill told him to write it. I don't know, I think she did and tell him to write it. Um, they would have thought, you know, that's only a little thing, but it, it, it just so encouraged me um, in terms of focusing my mind. I remember when I was um, in, in Grenada. So it's really just thinking in regard to the whole thing about um, how we can contribute to people's, you know, happiness in some way as well. Um, and, you know, when we look at greatness, Mark 10, 43 talks about whoever wants to be great must become a servant. Bottom line is we serve God by serving others. We serve God by serving others. Um, and the world defines greatness in terms of power, um, you know, possessions, prestige and all those other type of things. Um, and it feels like if you demand service um, from others, then you've kind of arrived. But in our self-serving culture, um, with me first always mentality, um, acting like a servant is not a popular um, concept. Jesus, however, measured greatness in terms of service, not status. Service starts in your mind. To be a servant requires a mental shift a change in your in our attitudes. Um, God is always more interested. I always think God is much more interested in why why you do something um, rather than in what you do. Attitudes count more than than actually um, achievements. Thinking like a servant, I think, is is really is difficult because it challenges the basic problem of you know the the basic problems of my life. Um, I am by nature selfish. Um, I think most about me. Um, that's why humility is a daily struggle, a lesson I must relearn over and over again. 
The opportunity to be a servant confronts um, me dozens of times in a day, and it confronts you dozens of times in a day, um, in which I am given and you given the choices to decide between meeting my needs or the needs of others. You know, we all have those choices every day. God provides those opportunities um, for us. Um, I'm going to ask Comsnell if they can show that video in relation to that. A simple act of kindness found me. A simple act of kindness saved me. A simple act of kindness brought me home. Well, I don't know if you could see there was a soul inside of me. If not for the kindness of a friend, well, maybe now you couldn't tell, but I'd be just an empty shell. If not for go So today, 
whether you, um, you're going to make a doorstep visit, whether or not you're going to make a call, whether or not you're going to send a card, whether they're going to write a note to somebody, um, whatever you choose um, as your random act of kindness today. Um, remember that there is no such thing as a small act of kindness. Every act creates a ripple with no logical end. Um, and that kindness is spreading, is like spreading sunshine into other people's lives, regardless of the weather. And today we don't have great weather, uh, but I'm sure that, you know, your kindness would, would do that. Um, so let's do something today to spread some, some sunshine. Um, and as I end, I'm going to, um, I want to spread some sunshine. I want to do a random act of kindness live um today is is burns there is burns around he's there yes yes burns is there okay wonderful all right burns um you are very special gentlemen um and today uh, i want to um honor you i've always said that um i am tired going to funerals and saying, hearing all wonderful things about people. Um, and I always think, did anybody tell this person how wonderful they are and how much you appreciated them and all those other type of things. So today um, I want to, well, we want to um, give you a, has he gone? <laughs> An award, a special award, yeah. Um, it's a certificate of appreciation could you see it? Yep. I will have to deliver it um, some way or something, but a special um, certificate of appreciation. It says, certificate of appreciation presented to Elder Burns Masanu for your outstanding dedication, commitment and service to Chiswick Seven-day Adventist Church. Um, I, I, I just sent a um, thing and just said to people, could you just, you know, what words would you use to kind of describe Burns? So I'll tell you some of the things that people have said, yeah? Um, dedicated, reliable, steadfast, a very caring person. He has broad shoulders, diligent. He's committed to his, his immediate family. And because of this trait is easily and naturally, he extends to others. He's very perceptive and nothing misses him. He's loyal and very funny, someone who's very dependable very encouraging, a great mentor, always willing to help, easy to talk to, friendly, polite, likable, a great support, great listener. And the list can go on and on, yeah, but I'm gonna stop there. So Burns, um, you know, we, we just wanna say thank you um, and we do love you very much. You don't Amen. have to... Okay. Amen. Amen, Burns. Wow. Amen. Amen, 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 amen. Burns is very serious over there, Burns. For once he's lost for words. It won't be for too long. Uh, he's, in, he's in tears. He's, over, he's overwhelmed. Okay, oh. I'm going to pass it over to Nathan. You're muted. I can't hear you, you can't hear him. Apologies. Um, no, I just want to say thank you and to Lim for your words. It's just a nice, timely reminder that, you know, being kind doesn't really cost us anything, but it can mean the world of good to, to those around us. Um, so, so let's be encouraged. And thank you again, Auntie Lim And I definitely second what you said about Uncle Burns. Uncle Burns, you know, I have a lot of love and respect for you. You're that guy. Um, and may God continue to bless you and your family. Amen. Um, at this moment in time, we're just going to pray to close. If Baba, I just want to thank you for all that you've done for us today, Lord. I want to thank you for the Sabbath. Um, Lord, thank you for this timely reminder that, you know, being kind, being good to others is what you've asked us to do, Lord. It's, it's one of the fundamentals of our faith and we, we need to do it, Lord. If we want to be like, if we, want, if we want to resemble you, we have to be kind, Lord. Lord, I pray that you um, turn this heart of stone into a heart of flesh, Lord, and Allow us just to see the good in everyone and just to be good to them and be kind to them. Not expecting anything in return, but just doing it because that's who we are. We are disciples of, of you, dear Father. 
So Lord, I pray that you bless each and every one of us, Lord, um, as we go about doing our acts of kindness today, Lord, I pray that you send the Holy Spirit to be with us, to guide us, and to give us a cheerful spirit, however we're feeling, you know, how, whatever we've been through, despite all of that, Lord, I pray that you just give us that positive kind of feeling, Lord. I pray this in your mighty name. Amen. 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 Um, at this moment in time, Amen. at this moment in time, everyone, uh, we're going to actually have a breakout room for anyone who wants to visit uh, a few church members, a few designated You're on mute again, Nathan. I think I was, yeah. Can you guys hear me? 